In the mid-20th century, there was a global show of force. Under the influence of the Cold War, many countries began working on nuclear weapons, considered the pinnacle of technology and military power at that time. During this process, various tests were conducted worldwide. But some of these tests led to terrifying outcomes. Whether it was a lack of experience, technical errors, or miscalculations, when something went wrong, the results were catastrophic. Accidental radiation leakage, unexpected explosions, environmental damages, and even deaths. In today's video, we will be discussing the nuclear tests that went terrifyingly wrong. 1952, Ivy Mike Test. The autumn of 1952, in a desolate corner of the Pacific Ocean, we are on the brink of an experiment that would occur for the first time in human history. This experiment was named Ivy Mike, and it would become a turning point for the island's inhabitants and the scientific world. Eniwetok Atoll, located in the Marshall Islands, was a coral island chosen for nuclear testing. Hidden from enemy eyes, it was the site of the world's first thermonuclear bomb test. But Ivy Mike was more than just a test. It was a trial of the most potent weapon humanity had ever produced. The first hydrogen bomb, it had a power thousands of times that of an atomic bomb. On the morning of November 1st, 1952, soldiers, scientists, engineers, and workers were completing the final preparations. Everything had to be under control, and nothing could be left to chance. The bomb weighed 180,000 pounds, and the deuterium and tritium contained within would combine with extreme heat to mimic the nuclear fusion that occurs at the sun's core, creating an explosion. At 7.15, the button was pressed. The sky was set ablaze. The blast rocked the island, and a mushroom-shaped cloud rose over the sea. Shock waves reached miles away. Windows shattered. The ground shook. The flames that engulfed the island caused it to vanish entirely. Within seconds, neither plant nor animal life remained. 1954. Castle Bravo Test in March of 1954, the eyes of the world were focused on an extraordinary event that would represent a new era of nuclear power. Bikini Atoll in the Pacific Ocean is a group of islands surrounded by rocky, crystal-blue waters. These desolate islands were to witness an event of a kind never before seen by marine life. This test was part of the U.S. thermonuclear program and its name was Castle Bravo. The bomb to be tested was more potent and complex than any designed up to that day. Unlike previous nuclear tests, Castle Bravo was based on lithium-6 deuteride, making it extremely powerful and unpredictable. On March 1, 1954, it was announced that the time for the test had arrived. Observers had completed preparations to watch this historic moment. However, no one had anticipated just how terrifying the results of this test would be. The Castle Bravo explosion was approximately twice as powerful as expected, it reached a full blast force of 15 megatons. This was 1,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The explosion's intensity was so immense that even the observation ships were endangered, and radiation spread far beyond the Bikini Atoll Island group. But this was just the beginning. A Japanese fishing vessel, Daigo Fukuryu Maru, was located 100 miles from the site. Castle Bravo's deadly radiation cloud descended upon this ship and its crew. That morning, the Daigo Fukuryu Maru was fishing hundreds of miles away from the test site near Rongalap Atoll. As the sun rose, the crew saw a strange flash in the sky. At that moment, no one understood what had happened. Daigo Fukuryu Maru translates to Fifth Lucky Dragon in Japanese. But this name was far from suitable for this fishing vessel. The ship's 23-year-old radio operator, Aikichi Kuboyama, and the other 22 crew members were exposed to Castle Bravo's unexpected consequences. A few hours later, the ship was covered with a rain of white ash. This was the start of the radioactive fallout. Initially, the crew didn't understand what this peculiar substance was, dubbing it dead coral. However, they soon realized that it exposed them to serious radiation danger. When the ship returned to Tokyo, the crew members fell ill. Kuboyama lost his life seven months after the incident. The Daigo Fukuryu Maru incident created a wave of concern and protest worldwide. The American government apologized after the event and compensated the victims. The Daigo Fukuryu Maru became a symbol of the dangers of nuclear weapons. 
The ship is on display in a museum in Tokyo, where there is also a monument dedicated to the memory of Aikichi Kuboyama. 1958. Grapple Y Test when the calendars marked the year 1958, Christmas Island, a remote island of Britain in the Pacific, witnessed a significant event. This was the site where the Grapple Y test was conducted. As the British government prepared to demonstrate great power on this distant island, the world was watching. However, this test was not just a technical success, it also brought unexpected dangers. The unique natural beauty and tropical climate of Christmas Island contrasted sharply with the dangerous experiment's location. On the island, a pure and innocent life was being lived, unaware of the effects of radiation. A short time before the test began, the British Army brought various devices, scientists and soldiers to the island. This activity aroused curiosity among the island's natives, but many were not fully aware of what was happening. No one truly understood how powerful this test would be or how much damage it could do to them. On April 28, 1958, with the first light of the morning, the Grapple Y test was carried out. It resulted in a much more powerful explosion than expected. The blast was three times the predicted one megaton strength. A massive fireball rose and created a giant mushroom cloud over the island. Radiation slowly enveloped everything. This radiation harmed both the environment and the people present. The soldiers were stunned by the explosion's power, and some were directly exposed to radiation. Some soldiers experienced health problems in subsequent years, while others struggled with diseases. The island's natives were the most affected party, and their entire habitat was destroyed. 1961. Tsar Bomba Test In 1961, the world was passing through a more fragile period than ever. The Cold War had reached its peak, and competition and hostility between the US and the Soviet Union had escalated. The arms race had become more than just a show. It had begun to pose a serious threat to the world. In the midst of this challenging period, the Soviet Union conducted a test of Tsar Bomba, the most potent nuclear weapon in human history, on the icy lands of Novaya Zemlya. Named after the Russian Tsar, Tsar Bomba was a symbol of terror. With an explosive yield of 50 megatons, it was 3,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. On October 30th, 1961, in the early hours of the morning, a 295 bomber was carrying the bomb that could alter the world's fate. The pilot of the plane, burdened with the weight and responsibility of carrying the world's most dangerous cargo, flew over the cold and frozen lands. The test site was a desolate area, with only snow, ice, and wind. However, this silence and solitude seemed to herald the impending horror. At the test hour, the button was pushed, and Tsar Bomba was released. The bomb detonated at a height of two miles. The sky filled first with bright light and then with fire. The explosion cloud rose, reaching a height of 37 miles. The blast waves were felt as far away as 450 miles in Finland. Buildings shook, windows shattered, trees were uprooted. Radiation spread long distances, forests were destroyed, animals died, rivers changed, glaciers melted. But the effects of Tsar Bomba were not just environmental. This test also altered the political balances on the world stage. The Soviet Union's demonstration was perceived as a challenge to the U.S., and it further fueled the arms race. 1957-1962 Kiritimati Island Tests Known as a small paradise, Kiritimati Island was a captivating island connected to Kiribati in the Pacific Ocean. With lush vegetation, crystal clear waters, and a sky blue as can be, it was like a dream. However, this beautiful dream turned into a nightmare in 1957 when the UK and the US made the island the center of a series of nuclear tests. In 1957, the Cold War was at its peak, and Kiritimati Island was chosen by two superpowers who wanted to understand the power of nuclear weapons. During Britain's first trials, the people living on the island were slowly displaced toward an unknown future. The initial tests are known as the Grapple Series. The tests disrupted the island's ecological balance and turned the lives of the local people upside down. This was particularly true in 1958, when it was realized that radiation levels were higher than expected. For those living in areas near the island, this posed a direct health threat. The local people began to lose their land, their waters, and even their air. The tests on Kiritimati Island continued until 1962. During this period, people living on the island were displaced, the ecosystem was destroyed, and many animal species were wiped out. 
Furthermore, the long-term effects of radiation levels in the region caused serious health problems for people. 1970, Bainberry Test. The year 1970 was a time when America was pushing the limits of its nuclear capabilities, trying to understand both the nation's power and the damage humanity could inflict upon itself. Known as the Bainberry Test, this experiment seemed like an ordinary nuclear test. However, it was not business as usual. In the cold grounds of the Nevada test site, a group of scientists, soldiers, and engineers were working on the details of this underground test, and everything seemed to be going fine. On December 18, 1970, the button was pushed, and the Bainberry test officially began. However, something went wrong. The underground explosion caused an unexpected surface leak. Within seconds, a large radioactive gas cloud rose from the depths of the Earth. This leak spread into the atmosphere and caused terror among the people in the control room. As the radioactive gases rose in clouds, they cast a dark shadow over the Nevada desert. Workers on the test site hastily began to retreat from the scene to protect themselves from the effects of these gas clouds. 86 workers on the test site were exposed to radiation, but luckily, no one died. After the test, the American government tried to understand what had happened and what had gone wrong. A series of investigations were initiated, but the failure of the Bainberry test was never fully understood. Up until this point, we have discussed examples that include terrifying photos and videos that illustrate what the explosions looked like. However, in these incidents, it was not the explosion itself that caused human death. People were watching the explosions from a safe distance, and no one was in the blast area when things began to go awry. What really caused human death was nuclear fallout. Research has shown that developing nuclear weapons always has a hidden cost, and this cost is paid by losing numerous human lives. It was revealed that between 1951 and 1973, 340,000 to 690,000 Americans died due to nuclear fallout. While high doses of nuclear fallout can cause death, low doses of fallout can lead to cancer. The emissions that arose after these accidents were not limited to the test site. The wind spread the fallout to other inhabited areas. After some time, it was found that the cancer rate in towns near nuclear test sites was much higher than in other cities. It seems as though the United States was killing its own people to be able to produce these weapons. The United States government is still trying to reduce the number of people exposed to radioactive fallout. Unfortunately, the effects of these tests on American society have not entirely passed. It is likely that millions of people were exposed to this nuclear fallout and may have experienced minor health issues related to diseases. However, the plug was pulled on nuclear facilities with the last test in 1992. The reason was the acceptance of a comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty formed by the United Nations General Assembly. This treaty prohibited nuclear bomb tests for both military and civilian reasons but it has not yet come into force in the eight countries that did not approve the agreement. These tragic events in history teach us that power must be used responsibly, as the consequences can deeply affect both our environment and human lives.